G'day, welcome back to the 40 channels. Today we're going to be looking at converting the rear axle to handbrake drums from a 60 series. Now this conversion is not that uncommon. The cool thing is the conversion is pretty straightforward. If you have a later model four bolt pattern axle, which is pretty much anything from I think 79 or 80 onwards. So now the reason I've backed up against the LX is the LX came out with this option straight off the bat, which is really, really cool. We'll check out underneath the LX, a little bit more luxury in the LX. They went with the handbrake on the rear axle, exactly the same setup as we're doing to this. The beauty of that is, it means that we can just copy straight off the LX, where all the little brackets and all the little components weld onto the axle, so that it'll be pretty much the same as a 40 series setup. Right, that's enough of this talk. Let's get straight into it and get underneath the axle. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump underneath the LX take some measurements of where all their little componentry and brackets are on that area axle. Then with all the bits and pieces that we've cut off the 60 series axle, we're gonna transfer them straight onto the 40 series axle. As well as a handbrake cable coming straight from the front, coming all the way to the back. We've got our bracket right up the top here. We've got our cable that runs from brake drum to brake drum. So when you pull it, it pulls them nice and evenly. And we've got another bracket that just supports that cable on the back of the diff and halfway down the axle. Over on two. You're not going to believe it. Look at that. Righto, so we just need to weld on a bracket just in the bottom about here. That'll support that cable going from side to side. And our front bracket that actually supports our main handbrake cable coming from the front all the way to the back here. All right, let's get into it, eh? Right, so what we have here is the entire rear axle of a 60 series Land Cruiser. Now, why do I need this? I need most of the components of this to swap over onto the 45 Troopy so that we're gonna have the handbrake rear brakes and have a much better braking system on the rear end. So what do we need? Well, all we need is really the two end pieces. So we've got four bolts. This will not work on an earlier model because they've got six bolts. Uh, now these are the four bolt pattern here. Undo these four bolts, one do all the other little bits of components so we can get all the bracketry and all that type of stuff as well. And then we can transfer all of that over onto the uh, Troopy's rear axle and do a full swap over. So we also want to take off uh, this bracket here. We'll just cut that off from the grinder. We'll relocate it and we'll weld it on. So there's nothing major to it. Start ripping some of this stuff off. Little R clips, tap that out. Righto, so we've stripped all the other bits and pieces off the uh, rear axle here, all the little brackets, the whole brake line, all that stuff. Now we don't need all that, we just got it all out of the way. What we need to do now is we need to remove, basically, this entire assembly. So to do that, we're actually gonna have to pull the hub out, pull the axle out, pull off the brakes, four bolts, pull off the backing plate. We retain all that, we can put the hub back on it just so it stays together as the diff. So last night I threw R1 over everything, gave it a really good soaking, and we had a monster summer storm last night. Big chunks of hail, the whole lot. So hopefully that would have helped, and we'll rip into it and pull it all apart. We've got a Phillips head here, we're gonna remove that first. First thing I'm gonna do is just gonna give that a bit of a hit. Give it a bit of a shock. Right now, our retaining screw that holds this drum on, or sort of holds the drum on. To get this off, we've got a couple different ways of doing it. We can put in our screwdriver or little pry bar. That way we can 
hold it without it spinning and try to undo it the same way. That way we can try to get it undone. Like that. Done it, that's good. Or you can just use like a little uh, little rattle gun with the right size screw, but just be careful you don't rattle it and damage that end of the screw because we want to keep that and clean that up. All right, now we need to jack that drum off. So we'll screw in some jacking screws. M8. Right, hey, there's our drum off. Now, this is the whole assembly that we need for our conversion, but we can't get that off without taking off our hub. So, 12 mil. Right now, we've got our cone washers in here. Easiest way to get them out. Actually just flew out on its own. So I did that one. Now I've never had that. They just shot out like a little bullet. That makes it pretty easy to come out. Now we're gonna hit on the outside of the hub to try to break this free. Screwdriver just give it a bit of a tap in there. And we can pull that whole axle out. Righto, so we've got our support inside our hub here. We've got two locking screws. We can undo that whole thing and that holds all our bearings in place. Pull that out. So we'll make sure you get those little locking screws out. I already feel that this one's really, really loose, which means the bearings have probably been slapping around in there. But normally you'd use this tool here to undo it if it was tight. And you certainly use it when we're putting it all back together. That's it. So we're gonna try and pull all this apart without losing any of the bearings. Try and keep it all captured. Righto, so that's it. This whole backing plate can come off now with all the components. There's only four bolts, pull the whole lot off. We'll take it inside. Put on the bench, we can rebuild all this, change our, put new cylinders on it, new pads on it, new internals on it. Then when we come to the Troopy, bam, straight swap over. Anyway. Seventeen mil. You may need just to put a little pressure on the back bolt there just to hold it in place, to stop it spinning. We're gonna keep the bolts, keep the nuts and bolts. The reason we do that is because we just don't know what the troopy one will be like. Hopefully it'll be a good condition. But if you keep everything, and if you find any issues later, you can reuse the parts. All right, that's it. We'll give it a uh, bit of a tap with a hammer at the back. That is what we need for our handbrake conversion on the 40 series Land Cruiser. That's all good, there's nothing wrong with any of this axle, this stub axle, the hub, the whole lot, it's all in good nick, so we wanna keep it in good nick. Just throw that hub back on. Get those bearings in there. Those bearings aren't probably any good, but that way, if anyone needs a hub, or we need one later on down the track, We've got one to use. Right now we've got a bit going on in this bench, so but it's all brake related. So you might have seen the video from a week or so ago where we did all the new brake lines for the fire truck. We've got something going on over here in the corner. It's an 80 series brake booster upgrade, so that'll be a video coming up too. We might tie it all in together. But we're doing the rear handbrake conversion, brought it all into the shed because it is hot outside today. I'm gonna start stripping all these components down. We're gonna clean it all up. We've ordered all new components. So the first thing we're gonna do is strip this down. We're gonna show you how we're gonna do that. 
All right, now the first thing I notice is my little cable here is broken. So we need to chase up a new one of these cables. That's cactus, that's no good. Right, our next thing we need to do is we need to remove everything here. So the first thing we'll do is remove our two retainers, springs. So long nose pliers, push down on the spring, give it a twist. Hold it all with your fingers so you don't lose any of it. There's a cap, a spring, and a rear cap, and our little pin, which will fall straight through to the bottom. So there we go. Look at my hands, they're disgusting. As always, we chuck everything into the bag. Now we've ordered all new components, but always keep everything you pull off because you never know what you might need later on. If you've ordered something that might have turned up incorrectly, any of those things can happen and you might need to save one of these pieces in a pinch. So keep everything. Next thing we need to do is try to pull it all apart. So the easiest way I find to do that is just lift it off. Off our brake cylinder, just like that. Pop off this rear spring. Right, so that whole assembly is apart now. We can take all our springs off. Okay, that whole component's apart. We'll just sit that aside for a second. That scrap, we've got a new one of them coming. Flip it over, one do our two bolts up here. Give all these bolts a bit of a, just give a spray with some uh, I find these uh, these long nose multi grips to be really good for this stuff because you can grab hold of it and really get hold of that spring to get them off. Right, uh, so those springs just come out just like that. Keep our little retainer clip. Clean all this up, give this a nice fresh paint as well. Wow, brake cylinder bolts. Pop the brake cylinder out. Now we're gonna put a new one of them in so we can toss that as well. Take out our little rubber plug, because we wanna keep that. That's ready to be all cleaned up. We'll give it a nice coat of paint on the back just so it all looks pretty. Now we've got a little tiny circlip up here. So we wanna take that circlip off. So that little circlip. Right, so that circlip's off, flip it over with our rear spring here, pull that rear spring off. Again, keep that spring, flip it back over again. Keep that. It's up to you whether you want to clean that up, make it look pretty. Now we have like this horseshoe clamp here as well. It's been well and truly mangled over. And so we want to keep that. So we'll open that up with a screwdriver. Horseshoe. Now it's time to get this spring here off. So the easiest way I find is to flip it over. Some long nose pliers. We're going to try to grab it into there. It's going to be hard to film and show you how to do this at the same time. Basically squeeze that in. Push down on the spring. Done. Whole thing can come apart. Keep everything like I said. This here. Want to keep that arm, that's important as well. There they are, brake shoes. Not in super bad condition, but certainly not in good condition. So they get tossed. We'll put new ones of them on as well. All right, all that's left is to clean it all up. We'll give it a nice coat of paint order all the parts we need, wait a week or so, and then we'll come back and rebuild the whole lot. So the beauty for you guys is, we'll fast forward straight onto it, minus that week, we'll come back with new parts. Right, so just like that, all the stuff's turned up. Actually, I had to wait about a week. So anyway, that's okay. So what do we got? We've got a full rebuild kit for the rear drums, with all brand new springs, 
check out the bag they send for a little control cable. It's very important that they send such a massive bag for a component like that. Just gives it room to bounce around and move. No, but anyway. <laughs> new rear brake shoes. New wheel cylinder. Boxes everywhere. You can see I've done the back. It looks very fancy, flash, full black paint. The other side, I haven't gone crazy. I haven't sandblasted it. I haven't gone nuts. I've just cleaned it all down with some, uh, some heavy duty brake cleaner from uh, Chem Tools. Just cleaned it all up because you know what the troop beer is. The troop beer is a practical, get it on the road and keep it going sort of vehicle. And I don't want to be wasting huge amount of times in just cleaning everything. We'll keep that time for the fire truck, which is on a very slow build time. But anyway, let's get straight into this conversion. Let's keep moving forward and put it all together. You've seen this stuff before, so we won't do too much detail, but we'll film it all and you can watch it anyway. Now we've got our adjuster nut. So our adjuster nut will sit that in place, like so. Just hold that there. Now we get our big long spring. Up under there, grab our multi-grip on those pliers. Put that into place. Righto, so you should be looking like that. We've done this one. We're going to do the other side to this one. I'm going to show you a little magnet trick. How to get that in place. MSA switch magnet. We'll get our locking pin. Slide that through. Put our MSA locking magnet on. That won't come off if you have it hanging over the bench. If you have it on the bench, the bench, when you push on that, it can come undone. So make sure you get that sort of hanging off the bench. You can adjust out brake drums, just so, just sort of in the center. Just there. Righto, so we should be looking just like that. Righto, so we did pull all this component apart, cleaned all the thread up, put some Molytac grease on it. Now that is free and that's working well. We've got our automatic adjuster, our little new little spring, so that just clips onto there. That goes onto our pin. And our spring goes up under here, into this bottom hole here. Just like that. Now we need a little circ clip on the top of that. All right, so we've got a little uh, circ clip or snap ring. Just goes up in here. Right now our tensioning cable. Right over our hook. Line up our two little notches. Pull that in. Right, eh? That's done. So obviously our seal will go on there when we go to bolt into the car. And our brakes are all built. So we've got all new springs. We know all our componentry all works as well. New wheel cylinder, new brakes, new cable. It is ready to go back on the car. Right, eh? So we're completely finished, which is awesome. So our drums are all cleaned up. We've got all new componentry and we're all ready to bolt straight onto the car. Pretty exciting. And this is all for the handbrake conversion going from the 60 series in a lead up to something a little bit more exciting, which would be a five speed gearbox. So that's somewhere down the track. 
Right on guys, that's it for this video. So this is part one. Part two will include ripping off the wheels, ripping off the hubs, all the bearings, the gaskets, pulling the axles out. We're even gonna pull the diff out because we've been given a diff with a locker in it. So that's pretty cool. We're gonna throw that back in, throw all the componentry back on, and then set it all up. So we've got the rear handbrake right here, ready to go and get rid of that rear drum brake off the back of the gearbox. Right now, so if you want to keep up to date with this build, make sure you subscribe down the bottom. You can check out our Instagram, our TikTok page. They're all new. They give you little bits and pieces of going on in the background. And until then, take care of yourselves.